2020 co-anchor John Stossel is with us now in New York. Thanks for being here, John. You have a piece on ABCnews.com right now on ethanol. Let's talk about that for just a moment. You say this is one of the featured myths in tonight's broadcast. I thought ethanol was good for everyone. Well, I thought so too, and the politicians say it's just wonderful for the environment, and it's American, so it reduces our dependence on OPEC. But much of this is nonsense, and the more dispassionate economists and scientists who've looked at it say it's a boondoggle. It's not necessarily good for the environment. Above all, if it were better, it would just happen. You wouldn't have to have government force involved men with guns coming to our homes, forcing us to pay taxes, which then goes to subsidize ethanol, make it cheap enough so anybody would buy it. It does reduce our dependence on OPEC, but by hardly any at all. What about clean air? Does it produce cleaner air? Well, that's in dispute. Some scientists now say that it, uh, it produces more carcinogenic chemicals, like formaldehyde, and it will make the air dirtier than it was before. Some also say it will increase greenhouse gases because to make the ethanol you need much more fertilizer. You have to truck the corn to the silo, you got to build the silo, you got to run the tractor and this adds to greenhouse gases. Because of the use of petroleum? Because of the use of petroleum. So uh, your thesis is that it is not anything more than oil neutral or petroleum neutral. Well, it's worse because petroleum's cheaper. You have to subsidize ethanol to allow anyone to buy it. It's not only that, it's, it's the politician's dream. It's, uh, Hillary Clinton voted 17 times against subsidizing ethanol until she started running for president. Now she's a supporter. The Iowa primaries, you have to be an ethanol supporter if you have a shot of doing well. And the Midwestern swing states are often big corn states. What's the cost-benefit ratio, John? I'm not qualified to measure that, but many scientists say uh, the cost of pushing ethanol is far greater than the benefit we may get. Now you cite the Cato Institute. What other authorities do you cite? Well, we cite a number of individual scientists who've reported on this. Uh, I would have to look through my data to check all the citations. It's, it's a fairly varied group. At the, end of, uh, at the end of the day, the promise was cleaner air, uh, less use of petroleum, uh, benefit for farmers, uh, and a benefit for motorists. Break that down for me. Where are the benefits? Anywhere? Benefit for farmers because it's taken money from everybody else and given it to farmers. Benefit for motorists? Maybe you'll have an alternative fuel that's a little cheaper, but you only have that because you're paying more in taxes to allow that to happen. Benefit for the air? By no means clear. Less dependence on OPEC? Maybe, but even if we replaced every bit of corn in America with ethanol, that would only reduce our dependence on OPEC by a mere 12 percent. And this idea that we are being held hostage to them is false because their whole economy is built on oil. They have to sell it to someone to keep going. If they decide they hate us and they want to cut us off, it doesn't matter because with oil it all ends up in the same bathtub. They then sell it to one of their allies who sells it to somebody else. It ends up coming to us anyway. D did you look at what this costs taxpayers? I don't have an exact number. But? A lot. A lot. Now, your book uh, came out in paperback earlier this week. Uh, tell me about that. My book is, uh, the subtitle is Why Everything You Know is Wrong, and it's there because that was my experience in reporting. So much of what I thought was true turned out to be wrong. And with the wonderful research staff of 2020 over the years, we've covered a lot of these myths, and we have about 150 of the more interesting ones in the Myth Lies book. And on the special tonight? And we have some new ones on the special tonight, like gun control reduces crime, opposites attract, stress turns your hair gray, a penny thrown off the Empire State Building would kill someone. We have a whole bunch. All right, John, thank you very much. Thank you, We Bob. look forward to the special tonight. John's book is called Myths, Lies, and Downright Stupidity, just out in paperback this week. 2020 anchor John Stossel in New York.